Let me start by mentioning the three different ways you can customize the camera. The first way is being able to assign functions to buttons. Now, the, what makes this unique is the fact that there are many more functions that you can assign to buttons than there are um, in the menus. Let me give you an example. So in order to assign a button, you hit the menu button and then you go to the camera two menu up here. Almost to the end, number eight, there it is, custom operation one. You got two items on the top here. Custom key for shooting and custom key for playback. Shooting means when you're taking pictures and you got three screens worth of buttons that are reassignable. Four custom buttons on the bottom, the control wheel, the control wheel is the round part over here. Plus there's also a multi-selector which everybody else calls a joystick right up above. So you, it's nice to have the best of both worlds and the, find the multi-selector is much, much faster to move things around in. Um, let's say we want to reassign the right button. Normally, from the factory, it's set to ISO. I want to change it to something called Zoom. Why I want to do that? I'll explain that in just a minute. It's a useful feature when you're shooting video. So, uh, you now have 17 pages of functions that you can assign to a single button. Uh, let me just go through very, very quickly because I'm looking for one called Zoom, and I think it's almost on its own menu there. There it is, Zoom, page 11. I hit the center button, and now the right button is set to Zoom. What does that do? Well, you're shooting a video. And you don't have one of those fancy power zoom lenses that uh, like you can sometimes pay dearly for. You have an old-fashioned manual zoom, but manual zooming can be kind of jerky and unsmooth. So you want to zoom in while you're shooting video. Rather than zooming in with the lens, I just hit the right button, and then a new menu comes up. And also hitting the right button, I can just zoom in by a certain amount. Now what it's actually doing is throwing, throwing away pixels, which is why I don't recommend this for shooting stills. Who wants to throw away all those valuable pixels that you paid for? But when you're shooting video, you're already shooting with a subset of the pixels that this 24 megapixel sensor can capture. All you're doing here is throwing away a different subset, so you're not really having a reduction in quality. So this can be a really nice automated pseudo power zoom. Now, as I mentioned, there are many features that do not appear in the menus, but they can still be assigned to functions. That's why it's important to have a look at the, at the book very carefully. Two of my favorites are bright monitoring, uh, which you can find here. Let me reassign the right button again. Instead of zoom, let's go to something called bright monitoring, which is here. Bright monitoring is used whenever you're shooting in almost total darkness, like these astrophotography images. It's hard to compose your image because you can't always see the palm tree, or you can't always see the mountain ridges, or you can't always focus on the stars. Remember, with these E-mount cameras, there's no such thing as actually moving the lens to infinity. It's all focused by wire. There's no hard stop. So being able to see in almost complete darkness and then being able to focus critically to get a really great image is a wonderful feature. My other favorite feature is the flash exposure lock function, which normally you would never need unless you had your subject not nearly anywhere near the center of the image like these examples show. Many other features as well. So that's one way to customize the camera. Assign one function to one button. Wouldn't it be great if you could amplify that? What if you could assign 10 functions to a button? You can. And you can access it here using camera one, Menu item three, whatever that means. Register custom shooting set. Here's what it means. You got three different sets of collections. Each one of these holds 10 variables. The shooting mode, shutter priority, aperture priority. Uh, and if you have yeah, shutter priority mode, you can specify what your shutter speed is, what drive mode, what's your exposure compensation set to. All these things can all be instantly recalled at the push of a button. The way you do it is first you assign, this is for sports mode, this is how I configured it. So ISO auto continuing sh shooting, one two thousandth of a second, great. So change your variables and go down to the bottom, say register, okay, this is re recall custom hold one. It's been configured. Now you go to the key assignment menu, camera menu two, custom key shooting, and now Let's assign the AEL button, for lack of a better example. You can assign this. There's 19 pages worth of stuff that you can actually assign, one of which is custom hold one, custom hold two, custom hold three. 
Custom hold one is the one we just configured, so we could actually do that. And then from now on, no matter what mode you're in, I'm in program mode. Let's say I'm in uh, let's say I'm in manual exposure mode, and I set my shutter speed to something ridiculously slow. But this will give you a good idea. So I'm in I'm in manual exposure mode, eighth of a second, ISO auto. I hit the AEL button, and instantly all those settings get kicked in. Two thousandth of a second, I'm in shutter priority mode, and I can start shooting. So it's great if you want to go from one kind of shooting subject to another kind of shooting subject, going from sports to landscape, for example, in a blink of an eye. It's great. Is there a third way to customize the camera? Yes. Instead of just being able to recall one function or 10 functions all at once, you can actually record everything in the camera in one menu and everything in the camera two menu all at once. And this is greatly expanded from previous Sony cameras. Basically over here, you see the one, two, and three on the exposure mode dial? Those are memory recall settings. Once you configure them, you can instantly recall a banks of information just by moving it to one, two, or three. How do you configure it? Here's how it's done. On the camera one menu, it's uh, you got two settings for memory. One is called camera one, camera two memory. What that means is everything in the camera one menu, everything in the camera two menu. And then, Basically, what you want to do is configure the camera the way you want and then store it in one of seven different memory locations. Only the first three are significant because they're actually stored inside the camera. M1 through M4 are stored in your memory card, which in my opinion is not that useful and I explain why I say so in the book. So here you say you want to store it in memory location three. Great. It's done. Then you just move the exposure mode dial to memory three. And there it is. And just in case you forgot what you had stored there, you can page through all the different variables. Now, why am I so happy about the way that they implemented this? One of my most used features in the studio is that second one from the bottom, Live View Display. In the past, when you stored everything in memory, it would not store that variable. And now it can. What is Live View Display? Well, let's say you're shooting in the studio. And let's say you got a radio trigger, a dumb radio trigger, not like wireless flash where the camera talks to the flash and the two of them agree to figure out how much light to output. No, these are dumb radio triggers triggering dumb studio strobes. And because you're in the studio, you got your camera in manual exposure mode and you have a fast shutter speed set like perhaps 125th of a second and F10 and you have your ISO set to something low because the light's going to be coming from your strobes and you don't want any ambient light to show up. And that's what your viewfinder looks like. How do you work with that? You can't see your model, you can't see the compose. That's awful. So that's why the live view display function exists. When you set it to setting effect on, you get to preview what it's going to look like when you take the picture. Now again, the camera has no idea you have a wireless trigger or a packet wizard attached. So it has no idea you're shooting studio strobes. It thinks you're shooting ambient, so it's going to look like that. Turn that feature off, and then you'll be able to compose your shot and see what's going on, and, uh, and then be able to take your picture.